Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Megan Gonzalez. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes care and education specialist at the Mary and Dick Allen Diabetes Center at Hogue. Today, I will be talking about eating right for kidney health. According to the Centers for Disease Control, more than one in every seven U.S. adults, which is 15% or about 37 million people, are estimated to have CKD or chronic kidney disease. As many as nine in 10 adults with CKD don't even know that they have it. Diabetes and high blood pressure are the most common causes of CKD. However, other risk factors include obesity, heart disease, family history of CKD, past damage to the kidneys, and older age. Kidney disease often has no early symptoms, so the only way to find out if you have CKD is through simple blood and urine tests, which would be ordered by a doctor. So our kidneys are bean-shaped organs that are located in our lower back, one on each side. The, the function of our kidneys is to filter our blood and remove the wastes. Kidneys are also responsible for balancing the fluids in our body. They help to control our blood pressure through the production of an enzyme called renin. They also help to make red blood cells through the production of the hormone erythropoietin. Our kidneys activate vitamin D to help us to maintain healthy bones and they adjust the levels of minerals to keep the body working properly. So how can we either prevent CKD or for those of us that have it, manage our CKD? Actually, they are this, the list is the same. So definitely controlling our blood pressure is a big key. If you are someone who is living with diabetes, want to control your blood sugar, specifically keeping your hemoglobin A1C less than 6.5%, exercise regularly, stop smoking, limit alcohol intake, and then eating a healthy diet. And I will be going over some diet information today. I would recommend to please check with your nephrologist if you do have kidney disease before making any diet changes. So restrictions of sodium intake are considered essential in preserving kidney function with CKD. High blood pressure reduces the blood flow to the kidneys that leads to loss of kidney function. So low sodium reduces our blood pressure. Restricting our sodium in our diet also reduces proteinuria, which is spilling of protein in the urine, which will protect against further loss of our kidney function. And the Journal of Renal Nutrition and most common recommendations today is to limit our salt or sodium intake to 2000 milligrams per day, which is actually less than one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon has 2,300 milligrams. So how can we reduce the sodium or salt in our diet? Definitely want to avoid using the salt shaker at the table and also while cooking. If you do feel like you want to salt your food, it's recommended to taste the food first and add a small amount of salt. Even if it's the same recipe, it can always be made a little bit differently. Also to reduce our sodium, we can limit our processed and commercially prepared and packaged foods. So American cheese is a, a processed cheese, better to do something like maybe a cheddar cheese. Although dairy products do have sodium added to them. Canned soups, even a low sodium canned soup can have a very, very high amount of salt. Frozen meals and deli meats. So I would definitely recommend to read food labels for all the sodium content. Again, keeping in mind you have 2000 milligrams per day and you can use your milligrams wherever you want throughout the day. A suggestion might be to aim for about 600 or 650 milligrams of salt at each meal to stay within your 2000 milligrams for the, for the day or possibly you have a day where you do go out to eat or maybe you eat that can of soup, then for the remainder of the day, you can focus on more fresh and whole foods that are much lower in salt. 
And instead of using salt to flavor our food, we can use fresh or dried herbs and spices, um, using garlic, onion, those natural flavors as well. And then of course, limiting and avoiding foods that are high in sodium, which will be here on my next slide. So seasonings, the seasoning mixes, always good to read the label and make sure that they do not contain salt. An example would be lemon pepper. So you'd think it would be lemon and pepper, but this commonly has salt added as well. And salt is salt, whether it's garlic salt, sea salt, it's all salt and it all functions as, functions as salt in our body. And bouillon and broth, they are available in the low or light, low sodium or light. Typically they are in the same section in your store. You just have to look for them a little bit more carefully. Smoked or cured meats and fish, salt is added to the process of smoking and curing. Condiments, I would say one of our highest sodium condiments is soy sauce. And again, even the light soy sauce is very, very high in sodium. Light usually means 50% less than the regular product. And since original regular soy sauce, sauce has over a thousand milligrams, the light soy sauce has around 500 or even a little bit more. So again, read those food labels. Steak sauce, ketchup, again, any condiments. Pickles and pickled food. That's how these products are made. They have salt added to cucumbers or olives, sauerkraut. Salty snack foods, crackers, chips, and nuts. Many of these are available in low sodium or even like unsalted, such as unsalted nuts. Instant foods, instant oatmeal, instant pudding. So they have to add the salt in there to make them cook a lot faster. And then of course, canned or packaged foods. So traditionally, a key focus with nutrition and CKD has been minimizing protein. This is because a higher protein intake overworks the kidneys. So when protein is break, broken down in the body, it produces nitrogen waste. When your kidneys do not function properly in, with CKD, they lose the ability to get rid of these waste products. As the level of nitrogen waste in the, in the blood increases, you may experience nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and loss of appetite. So here are just some examples of animal-based proteins. I would assume a lot of us are familiar with these, beef, chicken, turkey, pork, lamb, fish, and shellfish. And in the past, emphasis has been placed on the quantity of protein. However, new latest research is encouraging patients with CKD to consume plant-based proteins instead of these animal proteins. Diets that are high in plant-based proteins don't cause the same stress on our kidneys and are linked to a greater decrease in blood pressure. So here's just some examples of plant-based proteins, beans, black pinto red kidney chickpeas, lima beans, fava beans, lentils, quinoa, edamame, tofu, and then nuts and nut butters. So how can we avoid getting too much protein? So limiting the amounts, the quantities of foods that are high in protein. Again, reading the labels to be aware of the amount of protein, the content of protein in all foods, and knowing the amount of protein that is right for you. So if you're not sure and you would like to know that, you would want to talk with a doctor or to see a registered dietitian. And by the way, if you do have any questions for me today, if you could please write them down in the chat box and I will be answering questions at the end of the session today. So while sodium and protein intake are of concern, even in the early stages of CKD, Potassium and phosphorus often don't become an issue until later, until possibly kidney disease gets a little bit more advanced. And in the past, individuals with kidney disease were encouraged to restrict potassium and phosphorus. However, more recently, the National Kidney Foundation has stated that dietary advice on restriction of these nutrients 
should be individualized. Again, another reason to see a doctor or a registered dietitian. So let's talk a little bit about potassium. What is it? What is, how is it used in our bodies? So potassium helps our nerves to function, helps with muscle contraction. It, it regulates our heartbeat and makes it stay regular. Potassium moves nutrients into our cells and waste products out of our cells. And it also counter affects sodium. So that can also help with blood pressure. However, if we do have kidney disease, we don't want to get too much potassium. So how can we do that? Eating a variety of foods, but again, limiting the quantities in moderation. If you do have kidney disease and you do have a potassium restriction, you may want to consider leaching high potassium vegetables. A very common one is potatoes. Potatoes are very high in potassium. Um, and again, leaching them helps to take away some of that potassium. Do not drink or use the liquid from canned fruits and vegetables or juices from cooked meats. Also, don't want to use salt substitutes. Seems like a logical choice, but so salt is, regular salt is made with sodium and chloride, but these salt substitutes take out the sodium part and make potassium chloride. So again, if you have kidney disease and you have to restrict the potassium, using these salt substitutes would increase your potassium level. And of course, we wanna limit the foods that are high in potassium. So again, here are just some examples of foods that are high in potassium. Bananas, oranges, apricots, honeydew and cantaloupe, avocados, any type of potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, spinach and tomatoes. Again, we want to focus on a healthy diet. So even if you do have kidney disease and you are told to restrict your potassium, often if you have um, one of these high potassium foods once, maybe twice a week, typically it will still keep your potassium levels within range. So, but again, we do want to limit the amount and the frequency of these high potassium foods. Okay, so moving on to phosphorus. So phosphorus is a mineral that is mainly found in our bones and it's used to form strong healthy bones and teeth, can help to maintain a normal pH balance. It helps to get oxygen to our tissues and create energy. Phosphorus changes protein, fat, and carbohydrates into energy, helps our muscles to move produces hormones, and it uses our B vitamins. Again, tied into energy. So again, if you have kidney disease and um, you obviously would be seeing a nephrologist, a kidney specialist, some doctors will prescribe for you to take a phosphate binder. Again, if your phosphorus level is high, and I've just listed a few right there. And again, we can always avoid, limit the foods that are high in phosphorus that are here on my next slide. So phosphorus is found in milk, yogurt, cheese, in our meats, beef, chicken, pork, fish, and organ meats, beans. I know these are our good plant-based proteins, but these are high in phosphorus, navy, kidney, soy, pinto, garbanzo beans, nuts and seeds, Again, I know those are our good plant-based proteins, but they are, do have phosphorus in them. So any type of cashews, nuts, peanut butter, pumpkin, sunflower seeds, and then grains such as bran cereal and wheat germ. And again, the point of this is just to be aware and eat these foods in limited small quantities, not as often as maybe other foods. Um, it's not to cut them out completely. So an increasing number of researchers are recommending to pay greater attention to an individual's overall quality of diet. So to slow or prevent the progression of kidney disease, it's important to include a variety of foods in your diet, including fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, um, and limiting our meat and sodium and refined sugar. So this is the plate method. You can actually, there's the website that it's from. It's just the general dietary guidelines for Americans. 
um, called MyPlate. So um, you can use that as a reference. This replaces the Food Guide Pyramid. I don't know if you've ever learned about that, but to me, this is a little bit more straightforward. So let's go through each of these um, sections here. So starting with grains. So this is a standard dinner plate, nine inch plate. We would say about maybe a little more than a quarter of our plate should be including whole grains or possibly the refined, refined grains, depending on your restrictions. Um, again, if you're restricting phosphorus and potassium, you, you would limit your whole grains. Um, but including some whole grains is possible. Like I had mentioned, small amounts, not very often, so maybe once or twice a week, just to keep your phosphorus level normal. Now, some lower phosphorus and lower potassium grains would be pumpernickel, rye, or white bread, rice or corn cereal, cream of wheat, spaghetti, or macaroni. So those are some options if you um, do have or are watching your phosphorus and potassium. Okay, and about a quarter of our plate would include some protein. We do need protein in our diet. We don't cut it out completely. Again, we just limit the portions. So we talked already about protein today. We talked about the animal proteins, the meat, seafood, eggs. And again, emphasis is doing more on these plant-based proteins, remember, because they're not as hard on our kidneys. So the beans, peas, soy foods, nuts, and seeds. Again, protein is essential for everyone, whether you're on a low protein diet or a high protein diet, we, everyone needs protein. Um, so again, if you do have potassium and phosphorus restrictions, you want to limit or restrict nuts, seeds, beans and peas, soy, nuts, tofu, again, um, just ones to kind of be aware of. So, at least a quarter, I'd say more than that, is good for us all to include vegetables. So this vegetable group includes dark green vegetables, red, orange vegetables, and our starchy vegetables like corn and peas and our potatoes that we talked about. Vegetables provide fiber, vitamin C, vitamin A, folate, and phytochemicals that help prevent cancer and heart disease. Um, of course, some of these are high in potassium and phosphorus. So some lower potassium and phosphorus choices include green beans or like the yellow beans, if you like those, all types of lettuces, asparagus, mushrooms, celery, cucumbers, peppers, and eggplant. So again, your individual kidney meal plan, if you do meet with the registered dietitian, may recommend fewer servings of these vegetables um, or again, at least we can include, include some of these lower potassium, lower phosphorus choices just to keep your kidneys healthy. So about a quarter or so of our plate should include fruit. So fruits are high in vitamin C, fiber, um, and folate. They can also help to prevent our risk for heart disease and cancer. And heart disease is actually a primary cause of death in people with CKD. Now, all fruits do contain potassium. So if you are restricting potassium in your diet, it's best to choose fruits that are lower in potassium. And I have some examples, apples, berries, grapes, pears, or pineapple. So again, limited quantities, even though they're low in potassium, if you eat large portions of them, then you get a lot of potassium. And then off to the side, if you remember that picture of the plate, we have dairy. Um, so again, in a small quantity. So this would include the milk, yogurt, and cheese. Of course, our dairy provides calcium, vitamin D, phosphorus, potassium, and protein. All those things we are kind of watching. If you're restricting potassium and phosphorus, it's best to limit your dairy products to a half a cup or to a small serving and lower potassium and phosphorus options. So in case you're interested, coconut, soy, cashew, or rice milk, those are milks that are lower in the potassium and phosphorus. If you'd wanna give those a try, those are also plant-based. So as you can see, as we've talked about today, nutrition can slow or halt the progression of kidney disease. It can also help to prevent complications that often accompany kidney disease, such as anemia, 
high potassium, high phosphorus, and higher uncontrolled blood pressure. So the National Kidney Foundation recommends all individuals with kidney disease see a dietitian regardless of the stage of the disease. So if you are interested, um, you can have your doctor fax a referral to the Mary and Dick Allen Diabetes Center up on the screen. I have, I have put our fax number. So even though we are a diabetes center, we do see people with diabetes, prediabetes, any type of diabetes, but we also see people without diabetes. We see all outpatient nutrition services at our centers. So again, that is our fax number, um, but the doctor, we do require a doctor's referral to be seen um, at our centers. And if you would like more information, I know a lot of people ask for recipes, um, just more information. These are some really great websites that I've found. Um, the DaVita Dialysis, the first one there, they um, have free recipes, you can sign up. Um, they've got a lot there. The National Institute of Diabetes Digestive Digestive and Kidney Diseases is another great, really good evidence-based resource. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is for registered dietitians, but obviously, again, good nutrition information there. And then, as you've heard me mention, the National Kidney Foundation. So again, for more additional information, I would recommend to look at those websites if you're interested. Okay, well, I will open up now to any questions. If you could please submit your questions to the chat box and then they will get routed to me and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Okay, what is the significance of high renin levels with low to normal blood pressure? Um, I'm not quite sure of how to answer this question. I'm not familiar with this with the renin levels. Um, so this would be a great question for you to ask your doctor. So we definitely refer back, that back to the doctor. Do packaged foods have added phosphorus? Typically, I don't see that that's something that um, packaged foods are, are, added, are added to fat packaged foods. Like packaged foods can be fortified with things like calcium and vitamin D. I don't typically see phosphorus. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, I didn't mention this during my lecture. The new food labels, if you are familiar with the food labels, do now have the potassium level for the amount of potassium in the foods. They don't yet have phosphorus. Um, hopefully they'll do that maybe next round. But they do have potassium, which I think is great for everyone watching their potassium levels. So I would say the answer to this, do packaged foods have added phosphorus? I would say typically no. Okay. Next question, if I am diabetic, will my blood sugar be difficult to control while on dialysis? Well, that's a great question. Um, typically, I would say no. Um, dialysis itself, I don't believe, raises your blood sugar. Um, it's, of course, what you're eating um, has direct effect on your blood sugar, and also medications um, can have a, possibly have a raise in the blood sugar. So. Um, again, the dialysis is really just for filtering your blood with all those minerals. So I would, again, if you have well-controlled blood sugar, you shouldn't have any problems with dialysis. Okay, next question. Can dialysis cause me to lose weight? I don't believe that to be um, the case, unfortunately. So again, the dialysis, basically what it does is it acts kind of like, it is, it acts as like an artificial kidney. So your blood goes into the dialysis machine and then they filter out all the waste products and then it gets pumped right back to you. So um, I know the diet for dialysis is possibly different than what I went over today. You don't have to be as restrictive on things like protein and potassium and phosphorus. If you are or will be going on dialysis, there are dietitians that work in dialysis centers. So you will be meeting with them regularly and they can help guide you on your, on your diet during dialysis. Because again, it is different than when you're not on dialysis. Okay, we have another question here. Okay. So it says, have a blood test comprehensive metabolic panel on hand. What levels of which results should I be concerned with? 
Okay, so I'm assuming this is related to kidneys since that's our topic for today. So that's true. So on our comprehensive metabolic panel, a lab that doctors order very, very commonly, um, the labs that we look at for our kidneys, one of them is called BUN, blood urea nitrogen, but you'll just see BUN on your um, lab order. So there's that one. There's another one called creatinine. And then the third one is called GFR, glomerular filtration rate. This is basically how the kidneys are processing. So it's those three labs that doctors will typically look at um, to know where you are with your kidneys. They actually use that GFR lab to stage your level of kidney disease. So if you, I would encourage everyone to get, always get copies of your labs. Along with your result, there's always a normal or reference range. So then you can see where you are or how high you are. Obviously, if the BUN, creatinine are high, that indicates kidney disease. And actually for the GFR, the lower it is, the worse the kidney disease is. Um, so I hope that helps. Also on that panel, they typically will check for sodium, potassium. So again, you can see if those levels are off as well. Usually though for phosphorus, interesting enough, it does have to be a separate lab or if they actually order a different panel called a renal panel, renal means um, kidneys, then it should be on that one as well. But again, you could go back to your doctor um, for any questions that you might have on your labs. Okay. Well, I guess that's the end of our questions. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Again, if you do um, would like to meet with a registered dietitian, we have um, myself and others at, my, at our center as well. Um, if you would send a doctor's referral, we'd be more than happy to see you and meet with you for individualized plans to meet whatever your nutrition needs are. And again, we have diabetes, any type of nutrition services we do offer at our center. So again, thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you will tune in at our next um, session to um, learn more about eating healthy. Thank you and stay safe.